Hello everybody, this is Chaos with KLC Sports Productions, bringing you another viewer cast. Today we're going to be looking at the second replay that Chris submitted to me a little while ago. Uh, feels like I haven't been getting a whole lot of viewer casts lately, so, you know, feel free to uh, send me your replays to the email in the description. I'd be more than happy to take a look at your games, uh, see how you're doing, give you some tips, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, with Chris. So yeah, we are going to be looking at this PVT. Uh, the message that I got from his email was, why did I win? Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, things that went well, things that didn't go so well, and how we can improve. Uh, I think that's all I have as far as intro. Quick couple things. Uh, as you guys have probably been seeing, there's been a little bit less on the content on the YouTube channel in the last couple weeks, mainly as a function of work and school or kind of picking up at exponential rates and it's just gone bonkers. Nothing like doing 20 to 30 page papers every week. Uh, so yeah, so just haven't had a whole lot of time to get some content out there, but definitely taking some time at 11.30 here on this wonderful Monday evening. Uh, to get you guys some videos out there. So, so far, I haven't really seen anything too interesting as far as the build go. We are seeing a four gate, which is a little bit different. Now, Chris did a nice scowling pattern. He sees the uh, obligatory barracks inside of barracks, um, basically just reactor. But he does he does see that there are at least two barracks down and he also saw the gas. So he is fully aware that aggression is probably going to be coming his way very fairly quickly. Uh and I think that's kind of the main reasoning behind going for the four gate, which is okay. Uh, I probably would have recommended going for a three gate robo just so your tech gets up as quickly as uh your economy. But going to be moving out with this probe, and I think this probe actually just sits here uh, just kind of as a small little scout, which overall not not too big of a deal. Um, really, 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 really super fast double forge. Now, off of one base economy, uh, going double forge is not... I mean, it might work out, but I would say it's not recommended most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very rarely does this work out in your favor to be effective. Um, basically, you're gonna uh, generally what I'll do is I'll put down my first forge, wait until my economy for my second base is getting up, th then throw down the uh, second forge and the cyber uh, twilight council as quickly as possible. So, two cents on that. Probe scouts the uh, small little wave of units that are coming. A little bit of a preemptive uh, force field. Not not really the end of the world, but um, one thing that I like, since he doesn't have any, um, you know, high ground vision, putting your units kind of down in this these positions uh, gives you a little bit more sight of what's going on down below and whether or not you have to throw that force field down. Uh, obviously, you anticipated him just walking up into your, into your base, so that was kind of where the force field was. So... Uh, pretty much just kind of chilling out. Now, the biggest thing at this point, you really haven't gotten a good chance to figure out what your opponent's doing. Uh, you're pushing out here now to see if you can take out some of these units. Um, a couple force fields would have been really nice. But overall, the, uh, the small little squad gets cleaned up, and things are looking pretty good, I would say. Uh, and I believe this is about the time you start to queue in your natural expansion. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, the biggest thing is you really haven't gotten any indication of what your opponent's doing, what his tech path is going, where he's at. I mean, you really only got the initial scout, and that's kind of it. So uh, definitely throwing out a hallucinated phoenix right about now would be optimal for you. Um, and then also go ahead and getting your uh, your tech structures going on. Because the biggest, the biggest thing at this point, you've been on one base for such a long time, uh, you can see that the supply difference between you two, or you know, has kind of become something pretty substantial. So you definitely need to be looking at ex trying to expand a little bit faster. Uh, the photon overcharge is a really, really good mechanism to to keep your natural expansion alive as as long as possible. Uh, if you do see early game uh, aggression, but 
overall upgrades are doing good. You've got um, plus two, plus two on the way. Plus one, plus one is already done. And then this zealot is not chilling out at the watchtower. What a shame. Anyways, so your opponent's basically sitting back doing his own little dandy thing. Uh, you finally get an observer out to uh, to get over there. So super, super late uh, robo. Uh, and actually, I don't think you scout this third for quite some time. Um, so yeah, so the observer's going to get over here. And you actually see the majority of the push out. I mean, you see kind of what his army composition. You know what's coming. Um, and then Robo Bay is just now going down. So uh, definitely really, really late. As a function of your late tech, you don't really have anything that does AOE damage, and that's gonna that's gonna pose to be a little bit of a problem, I would think, um, in most scenarios. Maybe not necessarily this one. <laughs> so your opponent is expanded like a banshee, taking taking double expansion. Um, now, I was really surprised about this engagement. Um, you come in here, you do a significant amount of damage because you're on 2-2 two, two, and he is on 1-1. One, one. But honestly, if he sits and micros through the rest of these zealots, which there are only like two left, um, I'm pretty sure this army just absolutely annihilates yours. Uh, so a little bit of a mis misjudgment on his c case. Uh, he actually loses a, an entire medevac worth of uh, worth of units, so it definitely helped out in your favor. But uh, your army, because it's so stalker heavy, uh, doesn't really have the tank the tankiness of the zealots. Uh, so definitely uh, something that you want to consider. That's why the AOE damage is so critical uh, against a uh, marine mar marauder medevac type build. So. Taking your third expansion over here on the left-hand side of the field, um, I think this is okay. Personally, I would have preferred you have taken some units to kill these rocks and expanded down here. It's a lot safer. Uh, it's nice and tucked back here in the back. And as far as medevac drops, obviously he can come in here, but it, there's so much distance to get back into here that warping in a handful of units up here is not that big of a deal. So, uh, big drop coming in. Uh, let's see... Your army is down here, so unfortunately your robotics bay gets taken out. You do a recall on your main nexus, which is probably uh, the best option you had. Um, and obviously now you got to start building your robo bay once again. Um, one thing I would highly recommend is once your Twilight Council's up and you're kind of starting to pl produce Colossus, like one or two maybe even once you get your third out, go ahead and throw down the uh, the Templar Archives to get your storm out as quickly as possible. Because once your opponent sees that you're going Colossus, he's going to want to start his Viking production as soon as possible. And he's not going to be worried about getting out his ghosts or things like that. Um, surprisingly, in this situation, though, your opponent actually goes straight for ghosts and doesn't even... He totally bypasses the whole... Uh, concept of Viking, so lucky for you. So, obviously since he's on tons of bases, he's getting his production up, doing his things. Wonderful uh, drop here, and then we got wonderful recall! Awesome! So yeah, this, this drop more or less does nothing, which is pretty awesome for you. Um, definitely, definitely in a very, very good position. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with this pylon placement, but I think overall uh, the game has been played out very, very succinctly. Um, you really haven't had too much of an issue, um, and you're even luck lucking out him being on A command, or uh, move command for a significant amount of time. So you're going to actually be able to come in here and just wipe out this majority of this army. Um, definitely... One, one thing I'd like to make comment of is you probably have your entire army on a single hotkey, which is fine. Just make sure that when you go into an engagement, make sure you throw up the, uh, the Century Guardian Shield. I mean, it's going to soak up a lot of the extra damage that these units are going to, you know, put on your army. And this, this engagement will go a lot more in favor of you. So... The one thing, that's the one thing that I don't like about the Mothership Core is since it's the predominant um, spellcaster, 
it always is the first thing that comes up, and obviously Time Warp is not there, or Guardian Shield isn't there. Um, so this is not exactly the most uh, favorable engagement. You're not really doing anything, he's just repairing. But behind this, you're taking a fourth. You're getting up some more Stalkers. You do like your Stalkers, I must say. Um, stalkers in general, when it comes to the late game, are definitely useful in taking out Vikings. But they become a little bit less prevalent because you need the the tankiness of kind of the Arc Zealot Archon composition. Um, like I said, lucky for you, he didn't really he went straight into Ghosts and didn't even bother getting uh, getting his Viking production up. So so you actually lucked out as far as his unit composition goes. So we'll go ahead and keep keep this going up. So, SCV's getting pulled to his fourth. Things are going, well, a little oversaturated here on the third. Uh, Random Colossus going to join up with his buddies in midfield. And yeah, so at this point the game's kind of stabilized. You're in a really, really good position. You got your tons of production up. Uh, three more gateways going down. Colossus are still flowing. Um, you're predominantly winning your engagements, so... And I think, if I remember right, upgrades why, yeah, you're now even on 3-3, but you got the extra shield. Um, so you're looking you're looking pretty good, but now that you're kind of in the late game, it's kind of, about, kind of all about getting that optimal composition. And quite honestly, for the PvT matchup, I would say this composition's okay, but a, whole, a lot more Zealots and some Templars and maybe a couple Archons tossed in there. Uh, is probably your most ideal army composition because that gives you the flexibility of having your storm and being able to deal with these big bio, f you know, bio balls as as us Protoss players like to call them, or I guess any StarCraft II player for that matter. But overall, I think you've got yourself into a really good position to you know max out fairly quickly. Um, and even if you do have an unfavorable engagement, you're going to be able to. Uh, you know, remax fairly quickly. Uh, so yeah, some pretty good EMPs by him. Uh, but with the number of Colossus that you have and the lack of Vikings that he has, uh, yeah, you just walk over that army, and I'm pretty sure that is just uh, a move into the natural and GG, if I recall. So yeah. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the analysis. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear some of your feedbacks in the comment. Um, if you are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe here to Chaos Esports Productions. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, if you'd like me to check out one of your replays, as I mentioned earlier, there's an email in the description. So feel free to send your replays to that email, uh, and I will try to cast your games as quickly as possible. Uh, obviously, I didn't get to this game uh, for some time, but, you know, life happens. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, feel free to like, share with your friends on Facebook and Twitter, and I will see you guys in the next game.